hey everyone welcome to my channel i'm sorry my review is late you know one has to work to pay the bills so it is what it is um uh, thanks for stopping by it's your girl valerie welcome to my channel if you're new here don't forget to subscribe click the like button turn on the notification bell for when i upload new videos and definitely leave a comment in this episode i'll be reviewing married at first sight new zealand season 4 episode 11. um so it's a continuation of the you know the wives and the husbands sort of uh meet up and uh, the experts decide to come and they bring a couple from season one angel and Brad. they seem to be very happy you know they were able to give insight and i said this before on marriage at first sight us i said it would be nice if they brought in people that had gone through the experiment and had actually succeeded people like Shanice and jeffy jamie and doug even dion and greg because they faced obstacles in the experiment and they were able to overcome those. And some of them have been married for seven, eight years. So it would be nice. So it's nice to see that Married at First Sight New Zealand did this and they were able to sort of give insight into, you know, they lived far apart, which is an issue that uh, James and Sam are dealing with. And so it was nice for them to hear that you don't necessarily need to, the experiment ends today, you move in tomorrow. No, you can do, you know, weekend visits and then eventually move in together, which makes sense because she's got a son and she does, he doesn't want to just the following day wake up and find his mom has a new man in the house. It would be nice if they sort of spent time and sort of gradually built into that and then eventually they all move in together once everyone is comfortable that to me makes sense besides the fact that james still needs to sort out his visa because apparently it's held at the school where he is at the moment so that was good that was good they gave them good insight they spoke about forgiveness and personally i think cj is making more of this issue with jesse than it should be and i think jesse is doing the same i think they're trying to score points um because the guys, after the experts left, would, they sort of had a conversation with Jesse asking, what do I do in this situation? How do we move on from where we are? And James was like, you should have reached out because he spoke to CJ and he knows where she is. Uh, where is Michael? Michael? Michael said the truth, but the delivery was a bit too in your face. That way, at times, people don't hear because they're now into defensive stance. Whereas had it been more sort of subtle in the in the delivery, I think Jesse would have listened better. Hopefully, Jesse took on board what Michael was saying that, yes, CJ is wrong. But what did Jesse do to contribute to this issue? There's more to this issue than the toothbrush situation. And there's more to this issue than their fight after the dinner party. They all need to take responsibility. He needs to own his words for telling her are you loopy he needs to own his words for the toothbrush incident and explain why he needed to do that and she needs to own her calling him childish or criticizing him because of his age and only then once they sort of strip it apart and everybody takes their own sort of baggage then they can start rebuilding otherwise they're not going anywhere um and then you had um well Kara, what do i think Kara talking about she's not attracted if she talks about she's not attracted to this man one more time i'm going to scream because she has told us everybody that has watched has known she's not attracted to him for the past 11 episodes i don't know why we need to continue to hear about this i said this before i wonder how she'll feel if michael says he's not attracted to her or she's not his type i wonder whether she'll still have the same energy that she brings when she's talking about this man and for steph i think steph has got a crush on michael i think she does because of oh you know he's the height she wanted he's quite this that and it's like steph just say you've got a crush on this man it's okay people will i uh, will know and listen and understand uh she was saying oh i'm not sexually attracted to period people because he's not dominant and it's like the it's a fine sword in the sense that he doesn't want to come across in a negative way because it can be seen as dominance or it can be seen as abusive or taking advantage of. And so it's up to her to tell him what she wants. And then if he doesn't deliver, then that's the problem. But if he delivers, that's it. She needs to make a decision and she needs to have a conversation with her husband. The same way she's got energy about, you know, Kara and Michael, she should have the same energy about her own relationship. 
the producers are messy for trying to get James and Sam to admit whether or not they've had sex. That was messy. And for James, uh, <laughs> I like the fact that he's very innocent and he was trying to be truthful, but also he was trying to sort of um, protect Sam. And in his own way, he was able to let it out that they have had sex, even though Sam was saying, no, we haven't. We're still building and whatever. And it's like, oh, my God what hopefully she takes it well but the following morning when he's asked he said yeah i did speak to her you know and you know we're okay um sam uh steph sort of implied that they have had sex because she said there are things that we as girls talk about off camera so i'm going to respect girl code which i assume means that yeah james and sam have had sex um and then i Michael at, at the guys' night eventually owned up that he is not attracted to his wife as well. I think he was trying to be a decent guy and not sort of say that. Or maybe he's sort of retaliating to her constantly saying she's not attracted to him. And so for Sam to show, uh, t I assume she showed the text message that James had received whereby, you know, Michael was talking about the fact that he's not attracted to his wife. I think this bruised Kara's ego. This bruised Kara's ego. I have never been a fan of Kara and sadly, even though her dad said she's a good kid, this is not a good look for her. This is not a good look. The way she behaved, how can you say I'm beautiful and yet she's not attracted to me? And it's like, just because someone is beautiful doesn't mean you're automatically attracted to, to them. Beauty does not equate attraction. There are other things maybe that he sees that he, he deems as beautiful about her. And so the audacity, I, this is why I was saying, if he were to say the same thing, she'd be up in arms. And this is her being up in arms because she's saying, oh, he's retaliating because he feels some type of way. Well, if he was, he would have said so on day one. The moment you said you, you're not attracted to him, he would have come out and said, well, I'm not attracted to you as well. But he's tried to do the respectful thing. He's tried to do the decent thing and sort of protect your sort of, well, your pride and just kept it to himself. And now that he's owned up and said, well, I am actually not attracted to her as well. You're now in your feelings and you're so rude and so disrespectful. I didn't like it. I really didn't like it at all. I hope they find a way to sort of sort out their issues because that wasn't a good look for Kara. That wasn't a good look. And it's sad that if Michael says anything, he will automatically be seen as someone who's just sort of retaliating to what she said. And for her to say, oh, you are just as at fault about this relationship as I am. Hmm. If that makes you happy, love, then do you? These girls are too pompous, aren't they? They really are because they're starting to get on my nerves. Because they ask these men to do stuff and then when the men do it, they're not impressed and they complain and they complain and they complain. And it's like, what do you want? Make it make sense? Because this is not how you asked for something. Like Kara asked Michael to be honest and then when he's honest, she doesn't like it. She thinks he's faking it. You have Steph. She said she wanted period to take charge and now he's trying to take charge and she says oh you know he's just a great companion and it's like so why are you wasting his time why did you come to the experiment knowing that you had a type and you're not flexible and you're not willing to get to know someone so why are you here i wish she could just let period go i don't want period to catch feelings and then be heartbroken again she, she knows steph she's wasting his time tell him she was with michael she was dominated by michael through that yoga and now she's falling in love with michael and that's where i'm going to leave it uh, you have James and Sam go on a pat pat date. Ah, oh, that was cute. That really was cute. Uh, it was nice to see them play and just be relaxed. But then James, TMI, how dare he tell her that this is, you know, his go to speed date or, or dating, you know, venue or idea. And it's like, oh my God. At least she didn't take it seriously. She just laughed through it. Uh, they had a wager and she won. So at the end of the day, I think he let her win because he really likes her. He's really smitten and you can tell he's smitten. So they were cute to see. They were really cute to see as a couple and to really just see one couple just thriving. I feel sorry for Perry. Personally, I don't know who came up with the genius idea of deciding to put CJ and Kara to have them have a sit down. They're two of the most negative people in this experiment. So to sit them down, nothing productive will come out of that conversation. They are going to talk about what they are aggrieved about and what has been done to them. They are not going to hold each other's feet to the fire as in ask each other, what did you do to contribute to this 
clash in your relationship because we all saw the way that Kara spoke to her husband, but I don't think she's going to say anything or she's going to take any responsibility for that. Instead, she's aggrieved that he said he's not attracted to her. And it's like, seriously, there's more to this conversation that needs to be addressed. The, the Him being attracted to you should be the least of your worries. And you should actually be telling her what you said and apologizing to Michael for it. I'm not saying Michael is the best person, but at least take responsibility for your crap. Anyway, I digress. Um, and then you have CJ say she, she was told by the by someone that you know uh, her husband was saying she's not attractive without her makeup on, so she felt some type of way. And it's like seriously, the two of you are just looking to be victims, in my opinion. The two of you are just looking to be victims because it's not that big a deal that someone, if you are saying you're not attracted to someone, then be prepared for them to say they're not attracted to you. You can't throw rocks and then expect everybody else to just sit and watch you and just take whatever you're throwing at them. That's not it. That's not right. Um, I think to me, it sounds like Steph might have started the, 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 the beef with Car CJ and Jess because she said she doesn't trust Jess. So I have a feeling she's the one who came up with that. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. And it was cute also to see that James and Sam have reached an understanding about, you know, him possibly moving. And so hopefully that will help them in their relationship and cement them in their plans of what to do after the experiment ends. Uh, you have everyone getting ready for the party and it's like... Mm. This is going to be a mess. This really is going to be a mess. And it's sad that there are people that are there for the drama and yet they keep insisting that their partners are not there for the right reason. Because if your partner is not there for the right reason, you can walk out of the experiment. Because I feel like if CJ really wanted to leave, when the expert sat her down with Jesse, she should have had that conversation. She shouldn't have been owed whatever. She should have spoken out, out addressed whatever issues they had and then just said let's go our separate ways and they could have gone home because that's what maddie and nate did so why couldn't they do the same thing i don't get it she likes the idea of playing victim as well cj i think that's what she likes so everyone is getting ready for the party you have jesse eating his magnum magnum must give him a deal because he's the only one who's appeared eating magnums everybody else is not bothered by those ice creams but anyway i digress it's interesting at the rival at the dinner party that the experts pick up on the fact that well steph and uh piripi are the first people to arrive and the experts pick up that you know steph doesn't seem to be physically attracted to her husband and she treats him more like a sibling and she had just said that to the cameras and it's like i feel sorry for piripi because he's grown up with abandonment issues with neglect issues and so he comes with this baggage to the experiment is matched with someone who then does the same thing because in the sense that she's saying she she doesn't feel him that way but she's allowing him to put in all this effort to try and sort of build this this you know this relationship he's trying to take the lead because she said she wants him to take the lead he's trying to have intellectual conversations with her because that's what she's asked for and then she stands in front of the camera and says oh i really don't get that spark with him even a labadoo he's just a companion and it's like what makes you think that he is attracted to you it could be he's doing all this in order to try and sort of build an attraction or build a connection with you I don't like it when people criticize their partner and say, I'm not attracted. And then when their partner says the same thing, they're up in arms. Oh no, he's lying. Why is he saying that this, that and the other? And it's like, but you said the same thing. If it's okay for you to say you're not attracted to your husband, then it should be okay for your husband to say they're not attracted to you. Uh, you have James and Sam arrived. They're in a very good place. They are doing very well. They're very happy. Um, and then you have Jesse arrive and Jesse had to read the text message and you could see on the look on the wife's faces that one of the two of them is guilty. I think Steph is the one who might have said something. That's the impression that I get from the look on her face. She looks more guilty than I think uh, with the Kara situation that was said by Sam and we all had the, the, the recording in the car. But I think with the CJ issue, I think she might have been told by Steph because Steph said she really doesn't like um Jesse's or she's very suspicious of him so I don't know I don't know it's going to be drama at the dinner party I can't wait for the dinner party episode anyway thanks guys for watching please don't forget to like share comment and subscribe and click the link in my video to watch my review from episode 10 bye guys